What's up, State fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily. And guys, let me tell you something. We're going to look at some cool stuff in the uh, collection today. We're going to see if we have any uh, locks in the ball python room because we had all the ball pythons in this past weekend. It rained a lot. So we're going to see if we have any breeding action. That's going to be really cool. And uh, I don't know, maybe I'll throw in a, a cool bow at the end just for, for good measure. Um, then we have a clutch in the incubator that just hatched out. It was a GHI Mojave Pastel Clown, which is one of my favorite clown combinations, bred to a um, Blade Leopard Champagne Heck Clown. So we'll see what, what hatched out of that and if anything is really cool there. And you never know. Because uh, Champagne and Clown are weird together. Because sometimes, it'll, you know, Champagne and Clown, you just get like kind of a blank slate. Other times you get pattern infused into it, and that's uh, some of the, the fun, trying to figure out how to create that champagne clown, which is really beautiful, but still have some pattern and not just have it be a, you know, once again, a solid pattern snake. All right, let's take a look and see what we got. All right, we got a new clutch uh, that just hatched out in the incubator. I can't believe we're still hatching clutches. We got a couple more left still too. Um, this was a GHI Mojave Pastel, as I said before. Um, clown that was bred to a Blade Leopard Champagne Heck Clown. We didn't hit any visual clowns in this clutch, but we got some cool stuff. Look at this baby. This has got to be GHI, maybe Blade. Look at the swirls. I would swear that that was Hurricane if I didn't, you know, know any better. You know, if I thought there was Hurricane in here. It really is pretty cool looking. I, I think it's Blade GHI Heck Clown. It's a really nice looking snake. Such interesting. GHI in and of itself is really nice. I mean, if, I have some just plain GHIs that I keep just because I think they're cool. Matter of fact, Pablo snaked one of those females off me that I've been growing up because he loves them too. Um, so this is, I think, GHI Blade Hit Clown. Then we got, I'm sorry, I'll pull another one out here. This is, I think, just G, this is just Mojave, I think, right here. I don't know, is it Mojave Pastel? No, probably, yeah, maybe Mojave Pastel Heck Clown. Could be Blade, too, because, you know, Blade does weird things. I don't know, it's got that it's really good stripe. I don't know if that's being caused by the, by the Mojave or the Blade. Yeah, but it is interesting. And then the last one in this clutch is the coolest. Pablo wants to take him home. That's GHI Mojave Pastel, I think Blade Head Clown. These are all Head Clown, by the way. Yeah, so if I forget to mention their Head Clown, all Head Clown. This one is really cool. This is one of the coolest looking GHI Mojaves I've produced. I didn't realize that Pastel would work so well with that, but I, I really think that there's Blade in here too because it's got that really nice stripe down its back. And this one's got the same stripe down its back. Um, and we know there's blade in here. I don't see leopard in any of these. I don't, do you guys think there's maybe leopard in that one? Could be leopard GHI. That is kind of dark. I don't think there's leopard in any of these other ones. There's definitely, I don't think there's leopard in here, but that, that stripe is really cool. If the snake would just cooperate and open up a little bit. This is definitely GHI Mojave Pastel Head Clown though. Could be blade in there as well. Small clutch. Um, I was hoping to hit on another clown. Last year we produced a clown. I think we, it was hard to identify too. It was, a, it was a champagne clown too. It was a champagne like leopard, possible blade clown. And we're growing her up. Hopefully she'll uh, she'll breed the next probably next year. So nice clutch. Nothing spectacular, but because we didn't hit any visual clowns, but we got some really nice looking babies here with really good potential. There's a nice little um, lock we got. Talking about breeding season. That um, female is a killer clown. That's a super pastel clown. She didn't breed for me the last two years. I don't know why. She's being bred to a lesser pastel spot nose clown that also has a new gene in it. I, don't, I haven't named the new gene yet. I haven't been able to really prove it out. I purchased a female that originally came from Tracy Barker at um, VPI. And she was a lesser, I think she was a lesser clown with the new gene. This was one of the, the boys I produced with the new gene. And the new gene was very apparent when he was when, when he was born. It was wacky looking. So trying to pass it on. We'll see what happens here with this lock. It looks really nice. 
Hopefully this girl will finally produce for me. I don't know what it is. This was a girl I had bought as an adult. And whenever you buy adults, expect the unexpected, <laughs> which is usually sometimes not good luck. Here's another really nice looking lock. And this is a orange dream and she yellow belly female, high intensity orange dream at that. I had gotten from Ozzy years ago. And being bred to one of my uh, really excellent, excellent freeways. This is a super NG high intensity orange dream freeway. And hopefully we're gonna make more crazy super high intensity, super orange dream, super NG freeways this coming year. So far, two years in a row, we've produced some really nice stuff from this girl. And this, this pairing, I should say. All right, here's a little update on my super scalus, or super, I should say super micro scale, which is a scalus animal, obviously, the tet clown. This is a male, my first male I produced, at least in the uh, uh, sc uh, micro scale realm. And he is eating well. He's got a little shed stuck on his head there. We'll fix that a little later. And once again, damp paper towels, that's the key. <laughs> oh, almost got me. And that helps them shed. Otherwise, they they become a disaster. You have to keep them on wet paper towels or something at least that's going to keep moisture in here. I even bought this humidity hut um, hide box, and what it is is it's got a sponge under there, and you can keep the sponge wet so that when they are under the hide box, it keeps the humidity you know really well. And I got this from Reptile Basics, so if you guys uh, want to give it a shot, if you have any. Uh, species that need to be ha kept extra, you know, humid, that's probably the way to go. All right, here is the first scaleless ball python that I produced. This female, I've been growing up for the last couple of years. I think I'm going to try to breed her this year. She's ready, for sure. She's really beautiful. Um, like I said, I keep her on a nice wet paper towel she sheds really well sometimes you get you know the paper towels dry out you forget and you gotta soak her a little bit but she's really really nice and she's got size she eats i don't feed her huge rats just because i'm you know i don't want her to get bit but she seems to take care of herself pretty well i gotta tell you i've never seen her have a, any kind of scratch or bite from a rat or a rodent or anything like that so she's just really I mean, this for, for a normal blade Scalus. I mean, she's got a lot of contrast and a lot of interesting stuff going on in her. I think I'm going to breed her to a um, head pied, maybe, um, scalus head, and just see what happens. I want to see if, I want to see what the head pied markers would look like on a, on a scalus animal. I think that would be kind of cool. Because if we breed her to a scalus head, we're going to get 50% super, you know, scalus, and there'll be a 50% chance of it being head pied, which we should be able to notice with um, pied markers. So that's, uh, that's the plan. We'll see, if, uh, we'll see if she breeds. Here's a beautiful male that is available. I haven't listed him yet, although, because I was thinking about keeping him. This is a banana orange dream freeway. It's 50% head pied and 50% head albino. Gorgeous male. Oh, is he spectacular when he was first born too, wow. And uh, he's ready to breed, he's got, uh, he's producing sperm plugs. If you wanna make your own banana orange stream freeways. And uh, this is the uh, boy to pick up for sure. And then if you hit the pied, you're, uh, you probably should keep him. Just try to breed him out and prove the pied. And I might do that if I don't sell him, but really nice, nice looking male here. I love going through my collection and just looking at cool stuff. It's, uh, I forget sometimes that the, that some of the stuff I have. And like I said, I'm sometimes a, a slight bit of a hoarder. So um, anything that looks like offbeat or special, I like to hold back until I can see what it really is. We're gonna end today with this uh, gorgeous super fire boa male that I have in a tree. And the light is a little weird today, but Boas like to climb, especially young boas. And this is one of my favorite combinations, obviously. That super fire gene is just absolutely gorgeous. This snake is, is like snow white too. Some of them have like black spots, which I think kind of is, adds character sometimes, but this one is just pure white, black. It's got a little bit of yellow on his nose. 
But look at those black eyes. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Pure white. It's, it's a different type of white than albino, too. <clears throat> it's, it's almost got a pink hue to it, in a sense. It's really, you know, we, we really owe Jeremy Stone a debt of gratitude as boa breeders because he brought this snake into the hobby. If it wasn't for him importing the snake from Brazil, this thing could have been lost to the hobby forever and we would never have the snake in there. And there's so many great combinations with just even the single gene fire. Uh, fire just is, does the same thing what it does in ball pythons. It lightens stuff up. And it adds, you know, contrast and it does cool stuff. And look at that. I mean, just, it's probably one of the coolest boas around. You know, I like black boas. I like white boas. And, oh, we got, we got peacocks joining us here. Look at that. Checking out the action. You're not big enough to eat a peacock yet, so... Don't get any, uh, any ideas. And just to see these guys in nature is just, just amazing. Imagine this thing. This thing was somehow spontaneously made by the graces of uh, the universe. And someone found this thing in Brazil. And now, look, I have one here in the United States in Florida. Isn't that crazy? You think about it? I mean, one snake create this whole population of super fires and so many people breed these fires boas and have produced super fires and it's just uh it's an amazing story really and if you go back and watch my interview with jeremy stone you can find out the whole story of how he how he got this thing here all right hopefully you guys are having a great monday